Hey, Joe from Coding Box here today with the video I've been wanting to make for a really long time about one of my favorite video games, Factorio. I've spoken to several programmers who played the game before, and they've all mentioned similarities between coding and playing this game. So I wanted to dive in and take a deeper look at those similarities, and I came up with a list of six lessons about software development and software architecture that we could learn about from playing Factorio. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about the game in case you're not familiar, and I also want to mention up front that I'm going to be showing some clips of other people's factories throughout the video. I'll make sure to cite those along the way, and you can check the description below for some amazing links, and I do mean amazing. So let's get started. Factorio is a game where you're a teeny tiny engineer that's been stranded on a very large and hostile alien world. Your goal is to build a rocket and shoot yourself out of there. That's going to take some work. You start with just a few basic tools and materials, and you can use those to build better tools and accumulate more materials, all while trying to fend off these hostile aliens they call biters. Now that doesn't sound so different from other mining and crafting games, but the big difference here is the scale. Much like real life, building a rocket by hand is pretty much impossible. Not only is it time prohibitive to manually create every nut and bolt you would need, but there are also things that you can simply not make with two hands, like say battery acid or petroleum products. Your only hope is to automate these mundane tasks as you bootstrap and leapfrog your way to a highly scalable and robust distributed system. I mean, factory. And hey, that sounds a lot like programming, right? Now, much like programming a highly scalable distributed system, it's hard and you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna spend a lot of time refactoring. Remember those hostile aliens? They aren't so bad in the beginning, but as the game progresses, they become more and more aggressive, which adds some tension and urgency to your situation. It also means that you're essentially forced to sometimes make some short-term tactical decisions that conflict with your larger strategic goals. These decisions help you get through the short-term problems, but at the cost of increased pain in the future. This phenomenon, as known to us programmers, is technical debt. And in many ways, Factorio is a game about managing technical debt. Sounds like a lot of fun, right? But really, it is. So, what about those six lessons I mentioned? What lessons can we learn from playing Factorio? Let's start with those biters with number one, security. If you're playing with aggressive aliens enabled, then you need to start thinking about security before you need it. If the aliens are able to skirt or overwhelm your defenses, or if you don't have any defenses yet, then it can be really difficult to recover because you need to balance your time between fortifying your factory, pairing any damage, and also keeping your resources flowing and doing your normal rocket building stuff. Life is much easier if you start thinking about security early in the process because it can be difficult or even impossible to recover. Number two, designing for scale. Much like lesson number one, a little forethought up front can save you a lot of time down the road when it comes to scaling. Once you get your basic materials automated, it's tempting to just fit things like belts and assemblers and wherever it's convenient for what you're working on right now. This works out great in the beginning because it takes a minimum of resources to do it and everything's really close and easy to walk to. The problem is that the routing you need to do gets worse and worse with each addition. A design like the one below is much better because you can strap on additional components as needed to scale out the factory without having to do any additional plumbing. The lesson here is that it's important to design for scalability before you need it. If you wait too long and focus too much on tactical decisions over strategic ones, you're going to quickly and frequently find yourself boxed in. Which brings me to another design time lesson. Modularity and abstraction. As your factory grows, you'll eventually start running your initial resource pools dry. If you haven't properly accounted for this inevitability, then it can be difficult to resupply your factory as you add new pools of resources. It's typical for new players to build their factories around their initial resources, and it makes sense it evolves that way organically because it's a cheap and convenient strategy early on. But the problem is that it causes great pain and crappy hacks and workarounds to get you through the mid to late game as you need to start spending a lot more time building in clever routing to wiggle in resources to your center. If these hacks become bottlenecks, then they can be really difficult to work around without changing large portions of your factory. 
A better approach is to separate your inputs, logic, and outputs so you can scale and route them independently. Sound familiar? This insulates you from having to make changes later because of future expansions. This reminds me of the open-close principle in programming. Design should be open to extension, but closed to modification. Speaking of making changes, the next three lessons deal with techniques for making changes. Number four, profiling is important. It can be difficult to see supply chain problems before you suffer an outage, and one outage can often cascade into others, so it's important to use the P screen periodically to check on your productivity and consumption rates. If you're using a resource faster than you could make it, then you're eventually going to suffer outages because of it. Usually, you want to scale out to meet production demands, but as resources, space, and time are limited, it's important to focus on things in the right order. And that's where profilers come in. Same with coding. It's easy to waste your time working on the wrong things, and it's really important to use a tool that actually shows you what's really going on so you can focus on the right things and have measurable results. Number five, safe refactoring. Safe refactoring refers to small and discrete changes that make things better without breaking the system. It can be tempting to rip up large swaths of our factory in order to do things right, but if you go too far down the rabbit hole, then it can be difficult to get things back to a stable state. This can be especially bad if the biters start heating up while you're, say, redoing the power grid. Makes that recovery that much harder. Same thing applies to programming. It's much less risky to make small, isolated changes and slowly work your way towards a larger goal, especially if you have deadlines to meet. And finally, number six, managing technical debt. It's easy for me to say that you should just design for security and scalability up front, but turns out in practice, that's actually really difficult. You are severely resource constrained in the beginning of the game. If you tried designing your factory for the way you want your factory to look at the end of the game, at the very beginning of the game, then you're gonna need a lot of resources up front to lay that proper infrastructure. Trouble is, it's hard to gather up a lot of resources that you need until you've moved up in the research tree. So the trick is to balance your factory between your current needs and your future plans. It's a tough balance to get right, much like managing technical debt when you're coding. If you spend a lot of time up front trying to design the perfect system, for example, then you run the risk of running out of resources like funds or time before you start providing actual real world value. Additionally, it's nearly impossible to fully plan a large system out ahead of time so it's difficult to make correct decisions too early in the process. That's why it's so important to try to keep a good balance. Taking on technical debt is a great way to start delivering value early and keep the lights on while you're doing it. The trick is to be smart about when you repay those debts and to understand what you're doing and what the consequences are. Whoa, those are some pretty heavy lessons, huh? You're not gonna learn any fancy syntax or uh, the algorithms for playing Factorio unless maybe you start looking at mods. But I do think there are some valuable lessons that we programmers could get some experience with by playing the game. And so there you have it, folks. Uh, you can justify spending some time and uh, some budget at work playing Factorio. And if your boss gives you a hard time or asks what you're doing, then you can just tell them that you're just working on these six skills and uh, I'm sure everything will turn out just great. So uh, let me know what you think of the video in the comments. We're definitely trying some new things, and I, I was really excited to, to hear what you think about this. So let me know down in the comments, and uh, if you like stuff like this, make sure to check out the Coding Blocks podcast. Thank you very much.